Alrighty, now that you've gotten your way through UVs, this video is going to be a lot more fun when we go into normals. So, normal maps, you can kind of think them as free detail because that's what they are. So normals kind of control how lighting and stuff like that gets affected around the object, and we can use that to our advantage to make fake detail. And what we're going to be doing is I'm actually going to replace this material here with a completely white one for the example. So just search for a texture, no, it's just a parameter. Yeah, vector parameter. And I'm actually going to make it kind of gray. Something like that. Hit say that's a little bright, a little bit darker. And save. So here's our cube. It's got a gray look. And it'll be perfect for setting up some normal map baking. So inside of Blender here, I'm gonna uncheck you. I'm going to go back and do the normal unwrap. Well, better yet, I'll just start with a fresh cube so it's a completely fresh project. So here's our cube. So the first example I wanna give is you do not have to make the normal map yourself. So if you find online, like what I did, I used this for a color selection. You can Google normal maps. You can try to find something that fits what you want. Like if I scroll, like I'm sure there's something for like carpet. There's ones for wood, uh, brick, all that kind of stuff. You can just grab it and use it. So here's an image that I already, already downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and bring that on in. So here's my the normal I want to use. Let me just delete this guy. And I'm going to bring it into my material. Plug it into the normal, so RGB to normal, and hit save. You can already see the detail right there. But if we look at our object now, I need to re-import the uh, cube here. That's got some wonky UVs. One moment. There we go. You can see it has all that detail right there into it. And it looks like it's actually part of the geometry. So pretty much it's literally free detail because if you were to go through and try to model this all into the into the uh, mesh itself, one, well, not really one, but it's going to take a lot more to actually run this. So it's going to be very performance intensive. So you're probably going to be getting well over 100 triangles just for this. When I come over here, we have only 12 triangles. But as you can kind of imagine, again, we have 12 triangles, six faces. It gets triangulated. If you remember from this video, if you even watched it, you would have well over 100,000 most likely. Now, when it comes down to making your own kind of, making your own detail, you would generally do that with a high poly object. So you'll hear like people talk about their high poly and low poly workflows. And that's, I don't remember if that's what, I've done that in a couple of videos where I've made like the screw, a uh, couple other things, but I'm going to do that with the cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this cube have four large bolts in each corner. And then I'm going to use that to bake, bake detail onto this cube. So it's going to look like there's four bolts right Actually, better I'll use screws because I kind of want to have a little bit of a taper right on each corner. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'll leave the, I'll break the normal map link real quick so we see it as it is. So hopefully it'll turn out well. I'm going to use Marmoset for baking. There are plenty of tutorials for baking inside of Blender if you wish. Uh, you can use Armor Paint, which is free for baking, Substance Painter, and there's plenty of other options you can use. So here I have my cube. Now we always have a high poly and a low poly object. So I want to name this one cube underscore low. Then I'm going to shift D to duplicate it. Hide the original and rename the new one to cube underscore I. So this is the one that's going to have all the detail in it. So now I just got to make a screw head. So I'm just going to do a normal kind of B taper or taper. I'll just do a flat head. So. I'm going to add a new mesh. I can add a cylinder, or I can actually probably use the bolt plug-in and just get just the head from it. 
<clears throat> but if you don't wish to do that, I'll just do it quickly with the cylinder. I'll take that. Just scale it down about to the diameter that I wish. That's fine. Move it up about halfway. And apply the scale. So I'm going to position this right in the corner like that. And start with the shaping. So, drag you down. And I want to give it a taper. So I'm going to start from underneath. I'm just going to extrude straight up and scale it out. So I want to make sure that's still fitting. I want to drag it a little bit inward farther again. Because these are way oversized. Scale it down. And move it closer again. Okay. So here we have part of the head. I'm going to extrude straight up a little bit. Go out ever so slightly. Extrude up again. Scale in just a little bit. And then I'm going to use, whoops, cut a flathead shape into it. So it's just going to be a straight surface. So I'm going to use a cube for that as my cutter. I can just take it, scale it way down. Bring it over here. Scale it way in again, about to that, probably width. And scale it on the Y. So we cross over the whole thing. And this is about how I want my cutter to be sized. So I'm going to press Control A to apply the scale. Control A to apply the scale and the uh, screw. I'm going to select the screw. Add a Boolean modifier for the cube. Hide the cube. And here we go. So I'm going to actually go ahead and for now I'm going to apply it. Because I want to take these edges here. And I'm going to apply a slight bevel to it. So it's a little rounded off. And there we go like that. I'm going to shade it smooth. Go to normals, check auto smooth, and there's our head. So we can take it, we can kind of sink it in a little farther. And I want to do about like this. So now what I want to do is I want to shift D to duplicate. Move on the Y axis, about there. Selecting both, shift D, move them on the X. And move them into that corner. Then take, select all of the bolts, or screws, select the box, control J to join. And as you can see, I need to reapply the shading, the smooth shading again, because it looks like crap. And we're good to go. Well, we don't really need to do the smooth shading, but we actually want to have the smooth shading on our low poly. So here's our low poly. Can enable smooth shading. Actually, what am I talking about? It's we're baking. Never mind. So we have our high poly. Now, hopefully. I will get triangulation is issues that I can show you what triangulation will fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my low poly, export it out, create a new folder. Let's do it a uh, baking normals. Let's do cube underscore low just to keep the names consistent. Do the same exact thing with the high poly, except just name it cube underscore high. Put those in the wrong folder, didn't I? Yep. I'm going to put them right in here. So if we look at them now real quick, here's our high poly. We have the screws. Low poly should not, just to confirm, and we are good. Open these right on up in Marmoset. And pretty much I'm just kind of showing you the basic workflow for this. So I want to actually create a new bake project. I'm going to load these automatically. They're taken care of. And bake. And there we go. So here's the preview of the bake. So there's no actual geometry here, but we have the detail of it right in there. So there is some skewing going on. And that could really be fixed. So let's see, where was the tools? I don't remember where I went. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Being blind here. I don't remember how to get to the actual portion where I would set the settings. I'm going to go ahead and actually bake it. That's the high and low. Okay, I'm going to do some searching around real quick so I can actually find it. Actually, never mind. I'm an idiot. Click low. <laughs> and here we go. So, I'm going to paint skew. And a paint around the bolt or the screw. And that kind of broke it. So just control Z to undo it. And it's still showing broken, but it should actually still be fine with the bake. So, if I look at the normal, at a GIMP, you can, if I scroll in, you can see the four screws are placed oops, specifically in this corner right here. And that's kind of what we want there. So we have our normal map from that we've already baked. You can ignore what I just did. I'm going to re-import this normal, actually, with, whoops, with our new normal map. And then plug it right back in. So now we should have our fake geometry. There we go. We have fake detail baked right in. And granted, I just did it really quickly and crappily, but it doesn't take very long. So generally you would have you would do this for edges as well. So because we're kind of on this topic, I want to talk actually no, that's the next video where we're talking about shading. So that's the very basics of it. So you can have free geometry essentially. That's not geometry, but you get free detail. So from a distance, I wouldn't even notice this. Like a lot of what you see, like all the extra detail that you see in world objects, anything with a thread for the most part, for example, is going to be baked in. So I have a couple examples on that, but when I went to make the extra detail for my optic in Blender, what I had a spring, I had I think two springs and one threaded screw or bolt bolt the threads are baked you're not even going to even see them unless you're like examining the object but that would be a lot of extra geometry because i think it was under 2000 triangles that the object came out to be and that reduced it drastically or sorry if i had the threads in there that would have probably been close to the six to seven thousand mark and same thing with the spring that would have just added more on top of that so for example, here I have my high poly for the cube. I'm at 1400 triangles. Well, if I look at the low poly, I'm at 12. So there's a drastic difference there. So I'm going to try to see if triangulating makes any difference real quick. So I'm going to add a triangulate modifier to the, what you call it, the cube. And re-export the high, report it as a high poly. And just kind of redo the bake real quick. And just make sure that that doesn't... We'll see if that fixes it at all. Okay, so that did nothing. But sometimes I've had issues where I make... Uh, I'll do a big cut in an object. So, for example, I'll have my high poly here. I'll add a cylinder in. Scale it down some. And I'll just boolean it. So where I'm supposed to have this big cut, when I go to bake it, or sorry, when I go to import it in, I'm having these weird faces like they're up that don't actually exist. And that's way to the that's the way it triangulates. So I couldn't actually get a proper bake or anything usable out of it because of that. So you would want to always, usually before you export, it's a good idea. Same thing for your high poly. Apply a triangulate modifier first. That's generally a good idea, and I already went over that in the triangulation video, but just pointing that out once more. So, now that our normal detail is over, in the next video, we will get into shading. So, if you're going to get it, that's going to be a quick video. It's not really much to explain. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, and if you want to learn how to make an HK416, I have a playlist linked in the description, it's not mine, 
but he covers it from point A to point B or point C very simply. It's a low poly model, so it's easy for beginners to follow, and he covers pretty much everything you need to know. So I would recommend you check that out if you're interested. And as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description, which comes with a Team Deathmatch tutorial series with over 110 videos. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find my Discord server linked with all that as well, where you can ask anything game dev related, and I'll try to lend a hand. So, as always, I will see you in the next video.